You think you've seen horror? Brian King says, hold my beer. Be more than human. And welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph Carroll. I write under the pen name J.R. Carroll. And today we are going to talk about Brian King's The Rising. Uh, before I got on to booktube, this was my favorite horror book, and after the reread, it still it still is, or we'll say his duology here. Um, the Rising is one of the most realistic uh, horror books that you'll you'll ever read. Um, King does not cut any corners, does not pull any punches, he does not censor himself. This book is not for the faint of heart. It is not for those who are easily triggered. Um, I mean, the list could go on and on. Um, you know, so if you're squeamish or you get offended by anything hardly, this is not the book for you. So let's jump into the review here. I believe this book was published back in like 2003, um, where, you know, thereabouts. Um, but we open this book and you get to hear about all the great things that are happening in the world. We map the genome, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing all these great scientific things. Mankind is headed, you know, for the stars. I, I want to say maybe even they were talking about like drop, you know, getting ready to go to Mars or something. But so you go from this how great the world is, and then we drop down into Jim, who is the main character of the story or one of them, and we get to see his life, how things are going great, and then you know, his life starts to unravel, alcoholism, his wife leaves him, takes his son, and his son is the only thing that matters to him. I mean, and then they move away, and he falls into despair, and then he meets a woman, um, you know, he falls in love, she pulls him back, you know, you know back from the dead type uh, deal, and you hear, oh, you know, she's pregnant and you know and he's never been so happy um and then he you know talks about how you know the whole y2k thing is happening and you know he builds this bunker uh, and it turns out oh no we're good no bunker needed and then we go into the real story and the next thing you know from there He's in the bunker, um, you know, his wife is sick, pregnant with the baby, um, you know, you, you, they start talking about things are going on outside, the dead, the dead have risen, um, and right away, as I said, he pulled no, he pulls no punches, his wife, you know, passes away, you know, and he goes up. He, go, he rushes up upstairs, buries her beneath this tree, gets back down, and the next thing you know, he sees her again. She's at the, he has a little periscope. She's there with a bunch of other ones, and he's a and he's like you know takes his last finds his last beer, chugs it, throws it in the other side of the room, grabs his gun, and he's about to commit suicide. And then his phone, his cell phone rings, and it, and he doesn't answer at first because he's like, you know, it's probably just my imagination. Then it goes off that he has a voicemail, and it's on the voicemail. It's his son saying, "Come help me, Daddy." You know, mom, mom's going crazy. And then he's like, "I gotta go. I gotta save my son," and. So, you he takes off, you know, f sees some neighbors, ends up having to kill 
ends up having to kill his neighbor, then ends up having to kill his wife and baby. Um, I mean, and it's gruesome details. I mean, Keen describes everything, you know, from the tearing, how it tears, how it looks, how it smells, maggots, you know, brain splattering. And then we cut over to uh, one of our other main characters, Frankie, who is a, um, she's a, you know, she's a kind of a druggy prostitute. Um, she's being chased by uh, this, I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're, you want to say they're a gang, but it's a group of, group of men who are kind of in the zoo looking for her. And, you know, she, uh, you know, her story is, you know, she lost her, you know, she lost her baby uh, because of, you know, her addiction. It was stillborn. And so she's dealing with that mentally while the world's falling apart. These men are chasing her in a zoo. And you get this, you know, great scene where they accidentally let out this animal. And just, I mean, it is hellish. Uh, what happens and then you have you know the journey that she goes on to escape these men and You know she's trying to redeem herself uh, basically from You know from all the stuff that she's done in the past. So she tries to help some people um, You know some people turn on her uh, You know it is just I mean it, the scope of this book for how long it is is amazing. I mean, he spares you no detail from going, you know, and, you know, we're going on this trip to try to get to his son. Of course, Frankie is over here in the other end. Um, and then our third main character, his name is Baker. He's a scientist. And he is the one, or one of, the people who started this whole thing um you know it's you know it's a kind of like a science experiment going wrong um and it's not you know exactly what you think uh when you think oh zombies science you know science experiment gone wrong and you know he ends up um also trying to redeem himself uh, you know escaping but he learns a lot at first they had no idea they just knew that they had caused it somehow but they didn't know until he runs into a zombie and these are intelligent zombies they can talk they can talk through humans or some, even some animals they can speak with and he learns from a zombie who calls himself Ob um, where they come from um, and what their purpose here is. Um, this is one of the most like uh, realistic depictions of probably how civilization would break down if a zombie apocalypse were to happen. And there's, like I said, there's a spin on this zombie apocalypse. But... Um, I wanted to also show you, this is my wife's favorite book, favorite book series, um, and I got her a special edition. This is actually a prequel, limited edition, um, so it's kind of rare, but um, inside the book, it, the book is called Lazarus, and it's basically a prequel, and of course you see, you know, Jesus here, but if you turn it upside down, then you get to see Ab, and the book itself is gorgeous. It is all leather bound with, you know, the snake coiling over the cross, and out of the hard shell is a leather. The book itself is actually leather bound again with the seal here and um, there's just some beautiful 
beautiful artwork inside this book. And I'm not going to open it uh, all the way here because I don't want to bend it or tear it up. But maybe I can pull you to the back so you can see the really cool part. You got the artist, you have Brian King's autograph, and Ob's bloody thumbprint. Um, and there's all kinds of pictures on the inside of this as well. Um, but probably the most beautiful book um, that I own. It is uh, gorgeous. But um, I'm, I'm going to continue and uh, read The City of the Dead next. So if you enjoyed this, you know, when the next video comes out, hop on over there and I'll see you in the next one.